Football, I think, for me, is all about geography and, and, and fans, really. And without those two, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have the sport. And I'd seen the film Moneyball, which obviously this has connections to. And throughout the entire film, it was just about the team and the coach. There was no mention of the fans. And I thought it would be interesting if we could tell that story, but from the view of you know, the underdog, the, the fans who've never had anything really to cheer about, have had the odd thing to cheer about, but fundamentally they've not, they've not been you know, supporters of the most successful clubs. So just the opportunity to tell that you know, underdog having his day story was, was really appealing. We've lost all our finals, we've lost everything, but as fans that didn't actually really matter. Didn't matter at all because we were just enjoying going to the football, meeting our mates. Brentford fans had a different mentality, I feel. Things are slightly changed at the moment now. It's really weird because all of a sudden there's this light at the end of the tunnel. Some people are a little bit nervous because all of a sudden it means that you kind of have to win. And we're not used to that. So one season we would uh, be second or third in the league and that's quite a good season next year sixth or seventh so it's been a lot of a lot of ups and downs but but i think um it's a it's a new situation now of course i got the impression that from the guys who we spoke to in the film just the actual going was was the most important thing and having a club and being part of that community and part of that club the results were kind of almost secondary maybe that will change now they're finding a bit more success. Be runner up twice or bronze medal uh, four times or second in four cup finals that was very tough to be a supporter so uh, finally winning that was amazing. It was a big uh, uh, emotional moment for me because I grew up in the area I played in the club I coached in the club and I was away for 10 years and then I, I came back with uh, Matthew Benham and became the chairman. So for me it was like a circle that ended and um, I very much uh, enjoyed experiencing us winning the first championship in the club's history. From, from the, the Denmark perspective, I was actually really amazed at how involved the fans were or in, in the club itself. Behind the goal is where all the, the Ultra and Michelin fans stand, because it's, it's a standing area. But yeah, they've requested to have a fence put up so they could climb up here. <laughs> and uh, as you see in the film, that's where the drummer is and that's where all the flags uh, are hung from uh, and where yeah, the crowd are whipped up. What was surprising is that if you stood behind the, the fence, you wouldn't be able to see the game. So there's probably a good like 10, 20 people who don't get to see any of the game. They're not really there for the football, they're there for the vibe, you know, the energy. It's just a thrill, it's an adrenaline rush, uh, and then you have to be tired after a match, almost as tired as the players. The club, FC Michelin and Brentford actually have been so welcoming and, and giving throughout this entire entire process. I think we would have struggled if we were going to the current champions of the Premier League and asking for the same amount of access. I guess some directors like have a favourite lens or um, have a favourite camera. Um, I'm, you know, I'm always thinking about the post and what graphics I can put on it or you know, how we can do something cool in, in After Effects or 3D or whatever. And also the story is about stats and analytics and metrics. So it, it lent itself um, it lent itself quite nicely to, to, to graphics throughout the entire, entire film as a, as a style thing, but also as a way of further explaining the more complicated elements of it and um, just moving the story forward a little bit quicker. But basically the concept behind these hand-drawn um, animations were that you know, we'd stolen Matthew Benham's diary over the years and we'd ripped pages out of his diary and we'd I don't know, kind of scattered them on the tabletop and obviously those pages had his formula, his secret formula. I think Brentford fans have been educated over the last couple of years to understand a bit more about Matthew Benham and his, his mathematical modelling and how he's using statistics to, 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 to find players. You're looking for advantages, you're looking for an edge, you're looking for people that are otherwise missed by your competitors. You're just looking for that extra 3%. Sometimes when uh, 
the Midulan and Brentford project I described. It sounds like uh, like some science fiction project uh, where you dig a dig a hole in the in the ground and uh, you have a basement with lots of robots running a football club. But um, we still think that the, the traditional methods have a, a value in football. We still think the eye and the ear is important when you do recruitment. We still think experience and intuition is important. But we just think there needs to be a better balance in football. So like how long can it last until everyone else catches up with you? I think this is a new way of thinking and it's, uh, it's, it's clever and it's revolutionary and when you, when you look at it you, you can't believe it's taken this long in the history of football for someone to really sort of drill down into throw-ins and, and free kicks and things like that. It's so obvious when you see it. But as soon as everyone else catches up then that level playing field is just going to go back to how it was. One time one guy who said to me that the most important thing for uh, if you're a leader is to, uh, to be the dumbest guy in the room. And uh, uh, very often when we have discussions, uh, I feel like the dumbest guy in the room and that makes me very optimistic about the future.